Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to, going to be reviewing all of the Catrice Melt and Shine lip balms. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be my review for the new Catrice Melt and Shine. They came out with these in their Spring Summer 2024 collection and I thought I could give them a whirl. The reason why this video is so late, at least it feels very late for me, is because I tr had trouble tracking down two of the shades and then I finally found them online and I placed an order so that I can film this video. Um, so let me just get to it and then we'll talk about all 10 of the new Catrice Melt and Shine. In case you're new here, you've never been to my channel. Hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade and I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice Inc. And I love getting the use out of my makeup. So the Catrice Melt and Shine has... 10 shades, as I said. So when I first did my first impression back in January, this is why it feels like such a long time ago, because I filmed that Catrice first impression in January, um, I had eight of these. So I inserted some close-ups and swatches then, but I'll make sure to, before I sit down to, to post this video, um, I will be making sure to take the pictures of the 10 shades together so you can really see how they compare and contrast when you swatch them all together. These are lip balms. Are they going to make a huge difference to your lips? No. Do you need to buy all 10 shades? Also no. I think that with this formula, you can suffice buying just the one shade that you feel is like your lips but better kind of shade, and then you're done. Because these are very sheer, and they are just essentially a more hydrating formula for you to play with. So the one that I have been wearing the most, so if you've been watching my channel, in the past few weeks, I was wearing this a lot. This is the 030 shade of the Melt and Shine. It's called Secret. Um, and it is essentially like a mauve pink. And I feel this is the closest to my natural lip color. So if I wanna do that my lips but better kind of look, this is the one that I reach for. Um, I've also worn uh, the pink in 060 Malibu Barbie um, a little bit as well for a brighter pop. But these are very sheer. They are a very slippery formula. So these are not going to have longevity on your lips at all. However, because they are so nourishing, I feel that if I apply them once or twice throughout the day, I still feel like my lips are being hydrated. I will lose the color really easily though. However, these wear beautifully, as in when they fade, they don't like smear all across your face. They really stay in place and they just kind of disappear as you're eating and drinking. Um, but they are not supposed to be a long lasting formula at all. So if that was your hope that they would be like a liquefied lipstick balm kind of thing, it's not, it's really just a tinted lip balm, essentially. That's what you're getting with these. Which, if you want to go for the no makeup makeup look, I think that's a really great way to go. Um, there are some deeper shades, and we also have some really light shades. So, I'm just going to swatch all 10 of these on my lips for you, so you can see what they are like. I'm currently wearing the Essence Super Balm as a bit of lip balm, so I'm going to take that off. And then we'll look at the first shade. And the first shade is this peachy number. This is 010 shell yeah and I like how the sticker actually shows you what the shade is roughly going to be like because I do feel that that color on the sticker is pretty close to what we're getting in these. They are a click pen system and I feel that if I press it twice like I just did I get enough for a single application because these aren't a twist up you can't twist these back so please don't like sit there clicking and like push the stick out too far because it's gonna break because it is that more like slippery formula. It's a very soft product, which, it's, which is why it's in this kind of applicator. Um, and you just have to be very careful that you don't press out too much. Tarte has of course done a system like this in their, what's it called, their Maracuja lip balms. I don't remember the name of the product but Tarte has a very similar product to this, and I kind of feel that that's the vibe that Catrice is going for. Uh, Mac, of course, had those like uh, clicky pen lip balm kind of things as well. Elf has a version. 
um, but the Catrice ones are the ones that I'm trying. So I haven't tried all those other formulas, so I can't really let you know how this compares um, because I wasn't super interested in those other formulas per se. I don't need that many lip balms in my life, but this, because it comes in quite neutral shades, I thought we could give it a whirl. So here is 010 Shell Yeah. So here is what 010 Shell Yeah looks like on me. It's barely noticeable. It really doesn't show up, and I was expecting that to happen actually with this shade. I think the first four or five are going to be like this, where you can see barely any difference on my lips. I have naturally quite pigmented lips, meaning that I have a pretty natural, deeper set of lip color to my own lips. I tend to prefer some darker nudes on myself as well for a nude lipstick option, because if it's too light, my natural lip color just comes through and it really uh, warps what the shade looks like. That's something I learned and that's really taught me a lot about what lipsticks might be right for me. This is too light for me. However, if you don't have very naturally pigmented lips, this can still be nice. Or if you want something that just applies like a clear balm, then this can be nice. So the next shade is one that took me ages to find. This is 020 Beach Blossom. And it looks like a pretty peachy pink. Like the other one was more of a full on light peach. This has a bit more pink to it. So this is the first time I'm trying this because I only got it in the other day. So again, like two, maybe three clicks the first time you use it and then you just go in with it. So here I do feel we get a little bit more color. I can definitely see a little bit of the pink coming through, but it's still a little bit too light for the color to really do anything on my natural lip color. The formula of this feels very pleasant. Like I said, this feels like an actual lip balm. I'm not sure if it says anything about the formula. Like it, like to me, it feels like it's got cocoa butter in. Like that's sort of what it feels like. So it definitely feels, you know, I, I used to own these like natural cocoa butter lip balms that I used to use when I was a teenager. And it feels like that. Like it feels like cocoa butter. Maybe it just has a lot of shea in, I don't know. Um, but it feels very nourishing, very highlighting, um, very nourishing and hydrating, I should say. And it definitely like makes my lips look fuller. There are no more lines. It has a little bit of shine. So there's definitely something going on with this shade, but it's not my favorite for a reason. Then we are gonna go to, I think what's going to be the favorite of the line for me and the one that I'm going to hang on the most is 030 Secret. I already mentioned in the intro that this is the one that I have been wearing in the past couple of weeks and it's been my go-to lip product. I haven't reached for anything else because I really wanted to test it out. That's what I've been doing with all of the new Essence & Catrice lip lines that we've had in the past couple of weeks. So I was just really testing this out and I have just found that because of the shade is like my lips but better It goes with whatever lipstick like whatever eye look I'm wearing whatever blush I'm wearing today It's quite like shimmery and cool toned and I'm feeling super duper pretty in this look and I think this is going to be perfect with it I was wearing some more colorful shades in March for like the springtime. I had selected some palettes that had some more color and a shade like this, I feel then it just works with every look I do. So it's just really easy to grab for. I sweat, I, I whack it on in the morning. Maybe I do a touch up somewhere in the afternoon if my lips feel a little bit dry and I'm good to go. So this is what 030 Secret looks like on me. And as you can see, it definitely does something. It does a lot more for me than the previous two shades we've had so far, um, which is why it's my favorite. As I mentioned, this is my lips but better. Um, it adds the color I want. It, it adds a little bit of shine. It's like wearing a lip gloss, but without wearing a lip gloss and it still feels very nourishing on your lips and you have a little bit of pigment. So. For the natural gals, the people who feel they only need a little bit of pigment, this is a great product indeed. And this is one I'm going to be putting into my make, into my lipsticks, which are off on the side here. So this is definitely going to make it into my everyday makeup collection for sure. Then we have 040 Every Day is Sun Day. Um, and this is like a reddish tone almost, but it's like there's no no like super bright red in here. It's more like a coral red, sort of softer red, I can imagine, more like neutral leading, which I think can be really pretty. 
Again, I haven't worn this one at all. I've just swatched it for the images I took and that's it. So let me see what this looks like on. And here you can again see a little bit of color, not too much. Now we're getting into like the pinky red section. This I feel is the section where you're going to find like your watermelon pinks and those like, you know, juicy, I've just eaten fruit kind of shades. I love shades like this, especially in four, like sheer balmy fo formulas like this one that is a little bit of gloss, that has a little bit of gloss to it. I love shades like this, but this one, like it does, it's, there's not too much of a dis difference between me wearing 030 and 040 that I feel I would need to keep both of them around, you could say. I think I'm going to keep one of the brighter shades as well for that sort of fruity, I've just eaten a popsicle kind of vibe, which everybody knows I love. So yeah, this is pretty, but I don't necessarily need to keep this one around for myself. But I think that if you have like like more of an olivey undertone, this may actually be a little bit too cool toned and then a warmer tone like this may be really pretty for you. We have the next shade, which is 050 Rest, Resting Beach Face. And here we get into those brighter shades. As I mentioned, it's like a brighter pink. Um, it's got a little bit more of a neon vibe almost to it when I look at it in the tube. So let me swatch this one out. I think this can be pretty for people with deeper skin tones, but we have some deeper shades as well. So if you have deeper skin, those shades are still coming. And this is shade 050. This is resting beach face. And as I mentioned with the 040 shade, again, I feel there's very di little difference between the shade I just put on and this one. I really can't tell, tell a difference. Same lovely formula though. I really enjoy wearing this formula as I already mentioned. The shade is pretty, but I think I'm gonna like sh shade 060 just a little bit better on myself. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more pinky leaning, that's still very natural, then this can be a good one. And as I mentioned, the other one that I've been wearing a little bit more is 060 Malibu Barbie. And this is just a little bit more of a hot pink, like a watermelon pink, I feel. Um, so that's a little bit more up my street than those other two pinky red shades that I've just shown you. I feel this has a little bit more vibrancy to it. So I do like this one. And this is what 060 Malibu Barbie looks like on me. As I mentioned, I have already been wearing this. I feel this has a level of brightness and that juicy, like fruity vibe going on that I really love, especially for the summertime. So I think this is a great product. But as I mentioned, I think these pinky reds, if you have one, you definitely don't need all of them. But this is my personal favorite. It's the one that also goes best with the undertone of my lips. Now, if you're wondering, because of course, if you were to find these in store, uh, how can I test that? Usually the inside of your fingertip is a great spot to test for a lipstick if you want to test the shade. A formula you can test on the back of your hand, but this is a much lighter shade than the inside of your fingertip. So if you use the inside of your fingertip, you get a little bit better of what the shade might look like on your lips. So that's what I would suggest. If you find these in store and you're looking at all these different shades and you don't know what to go for, test it on your fingertip to see what looks right there and what actually shows up for you. And this also has a little bit of a staining effect because I just took it off, but it, I feel there's still a little bit of color. Um, number 70 is Pink Hawaii. And this is again, just a touch brighter. This I have worn but I ended up reaching for Malibu Barbie just a little bit more. This is a touch brighter, a touch more red, but nothing too intensely different from the previous one, I feel. And this is 070 Pink Hawaii. As you can see, this has a little bit more color to it. And I therefore feel it just clashes a little too much. Like if I get to this level of pigmentation, I would much more easily reach for something like my uh, uh, Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Lucents or even the velvet mattes, the true velvets that she does, because here we're getting into the territory where it gets a little too pigment for me, too pigmented for me, that I'm going to like this kind of formula with the kind of shade that it is. Um, but it is pretty for sure. However, what I found uh, with this one is that it seems like the plastic tube is sticking out a little too much. And then it kind of like 
tugs on my lips. Like I can feel like little bits of plastic scraping my lips as I'm applying it, which is not great. So it does seem that some of these may not have the best packaging. It definitely feels a little bit cheaply made. Um, but yeah, that's just something to be aware of. Make sure you press them up high enough so your lips don't hit the plastic. And then we get into the second shade I had difficulty tracking down, and this is 080 Lost at Sea. And I really, really desperately wanted to try especially this one because I think this kind of like berry plum kind of shade can be really pretty in the fall time. And I haven't tried too many of these like balmy products with a deeper shade. So I hope this is deep enough and that it's especially it's going to be something I can recommend for people with deeper skin tones because very often in lip lines like this, I feel especially the deeper skin tones get left out, but the next three seem very promising if I just judge it by the sticker. I knew I was gonna love it. I knew I was going to love this one. So this is the third one that I feel I can definitely put into my active makeup collection because shades like this in the fall time, stunning. This with a green eye, it's going to look absolutely stunning. So this is more of a plummy shade. It looks like a very, like, again, these like berry, raspberry kind of shades. I also really, really enjoy in formulas like this which is why I really wanted to wait to do this video until I had this one as well, because it's just really pretty. This is the first time I'm putting it on, but I think this is a very pretty shade, and especially for people with deeper skin, and if they have cooler undertones, a shade like this is going to look like an absolutely stunning, more neutral leading shade for you. For me, it's like more full on color, but people with deeper skin can definitely wear this as a more neutral shade. The next shade is 090 Coco Colada, and this seems to be a brown. And I'm not a huge fan of browns, we all know that. But if you have deeper skin or maybe a more olive deeper leaning skin tone, and you like your browns, you like your warm tones, but if you have deeper skin or maybe an olive skin tone that really likes warm tones, then this may be a really pretty one. I don't think it's going to be for me. However, if I were to wear my hair down and I wear a pretty neutral lip, I can get away with these like more sepia looking tones as well. So we'll, we'll see how, it do, how this one goes. See, I think this can be a really pretty nude shade. Like what the shade Secret is doing for me, this will do for people with warmer undertones and deeper skin tones than mine. This is really pretty, I think for some people. For me, it's a little bit too warm toned, especially for my lips. I've got a strong purple undertone in my bottom lip especially, and that purpley tone is really coming through with this, and it just is a weird, it's a weird clash, which is why I don't love it, but yeah. I think this can be right for a lot of people, but just not me. And the final shade I have to show you is Sunny Side Up. This is shade 100, and it seems to be very, very deep. Remember, these are incredibly balmy and sheer, so you're not going to get this kind of color payoff, of course, but it seems to be a cooler tone brown. And maybe, you know, some cooler tone browns can lead a little bit more plum, so again, for deeper skin tones, this can be a great neutral look. So I really build up this color to make it stand out. And the way I would describe this shade, uh, 100 Sunny Side Up, is as a raisin shade. So it has that depth of color of like a raisin, you know, like dried fruit. It's very much giving that, but it is a little bit too dark for my personal taste. Like, again, there is a little bit of a clash. However, because I have some purple running through my lips, this pulls up that purpliness and brings out that berry tone and makes it a lot stronger. So I think this is one that can go both ways. Depending on your undertone and the natural color of your lips, I think this can suit a lot of people. And skin tone wise, I think this will look best if you do have deeper skin. So that's it, those were all 10 of the shades of the new Catrice Melt and Shine. I am personally going to keep around the three shades I already mentioned, so Secret, Malibu Barbie, and uh, who? Lost at Sea. So 030, 060, and 080, those are the ones that make their way into my makeup collection. 
the other ones I've tried for you, I've shown you, and I've told you who I think they might be right for as well. Um, so I hope this video was as useful as possible. And stay tuned because I will be coming on here very, very soon with a full roundup of all of the Essence and Catrice products. Now that I've tested them all out and I have all the reviews up, how do I feel about these ranges? Did they do a good job, yes or no? And then I'll do a full lowdown on all the products after trying them. So stay tuned for that if you want to hear all of my thoughts. And for now, I would like to thank you so very much for watching this video today. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch one of my videos and then hope to see you in my next one. See you then. Bye-bye.